Hello, we are looking at two virtual microscopy slides side by side. On the left, we have normal hair bearing skin, and on the right, we have a carbuncle. First, I'm going to demonstrate some of the features of normal skin. And let's take a look at the layers. On the surface, we have the epidermis, which is comprised of stratified squamous epithelium, which is keratinizing. So we have a few layers of keratinized material on the surface. And then below this, this whole pink layer is known as the dermis. Within the dermis, we can see hair follicles, pilosebaceous units with the sebaceous glands here and the hair follicle. We can also see some adnexal structures such as sweat glands. And then deep to this, we have the adipose tissue that forms the subcutis. You can see that some of the hair follicles also extend into the subcutis. When we have an infectious process involving a hair follicle and this giving rise to acute separative inflammation of the follicle, this is called a furuncle. Sometimes we can have several hair follicles that get infected and then the acute separative inflammation can spread over a larger area across a whole expanse of the dermis as well as deep to the subcutis and that is known as a carbuncle. So here is the carbuncle and we are going to focus on this larger tissue piece. There is also a smaller tissue piece here which is facing the opposite direction with the epidermis located here and the dermis. In this larger tissue piece, we can just about make out the epidermis on the surface. Here is the dermis and here is the subcutis. So we can see that there are large areas of this bluish cellular infiltrates within the dermis, also an abscess cavity forming here. And these bluish cellular infiltrates extend deep into the subcutis. All these are areas of acute separative inflammation. There is also a little bit of hemorrhage here. This is potentially due to the trauma of the surgical procedure. Let's have a closer look at these bluish cellular infiltrates. So we can see that most of the cells are neutrophils. We can appreciate the multi-lobed nuclei. And there's some bluish and pinkish necrotic material in between. So essentially, acute separative inflammation is composed of numerous neutrophils, necrotic cellular material, and sometimes we can also see the offending infectious agents. In the case of a furuncle and a carbuncle, one of the commonest infective agents is the bacteria Staphylococcus aureus. So we have a lot of separative inflammation extending into the dermis and this acute separative inflammation also extends into the subcutaneous fat or the subcutis. There are also some associated macrophages. Some of them are multinucleated, whereas other cells have a single nucleus. And this tells us that this inflammatory process has gone on for a while. And here, towards the right edge of this specimen, we can see that there is almost a vague vertical track. And this vertical track is composed of acute separative inflammation. So this is a sinus track where we have the acute separative inflammation that opens back up into the skin surface. So this would appear clinically as a sinus track that is discharging purulent material. If we look on higher magnification, we can see that there are again numerous neutrophils, but at the same time, at the edge of this sinus tract, there is a little bit of granulation tissue with small vessels as well. So in summary, this is an example of a carbuncle where we have a large area of acute separative inflammation with abscess formation involving the dermis and the subcutis. And a carbuncle usually occurs with infection and acute separative inflammation involving several hair follicles. Thank you.